where you are now. Welcome to Myanmar TESOL Teacher Support uh, Program. Uh, before we introduce the speaker to all of you, let's tell, talk about a bit of MND SOR. Uh, as we all know, MND SOR has been working on professional development for teachers, especially teaching English. As we believe uh, quality education starts with quality teachers who are skillful and competent. On this purpose, we have been working with teachers and teaching professionals locally, regionally, and internationally offering CBD sessions and some training. Uh, and before we begin a bit of housekeeping, this session will take about an hour and will be recorded. You can make comments and ask questions and write them in the chat box. Uh, after the talk, there will be a Q&A session for about 10, hour, 10 minutes. Then uh, you will be able to ask questions of yourself having your microphone on. Towards the end of the webinar, we will give you a link for a Google form for NEAT and uh, This one where suffix are uh, taking your names and opinions for this webinar so that we can send back uh, the e-certificate to you within two weeks. Lastly, that's a kind request to keep all of your microphones off and uh, keep yourself muted during the session while the speaker is talking. Now, let me introduce the speaker, uh, Teacher Linder. Today, we are very delighted to have the opportunity to meet with Teacher Linder and, the, and her, the topic is about teaching argument writing. That is a very important area for teachers uh, who are teaching English for academic purposes. And Teacher Linder is the founder and principal of Keystone Education for Bunnies. She suffers an accomplished educator with over 17 years of experience in teaching English. Her educational background includes a Master of Education from Yangon University of Education, a second Master of Educational Leadership and Management from Lepro University, Australia, and a di Diploma in English Language Education from Hiroshima University, Japan. Uh, teacher Linda is recognized uh, for her academic achievement as an as a member of the Golden Key International Honors Society in Australia. Now, Teacher Liner, uh, I'd like to hand over the session to you. The floor is yours. Thank you so much, Pew. Uh, thank you so much, Teacher Mui and MMP So I, am, I feel really honored to be the presenter of tonight. Hello, everyone. Um, I am Linda. Uh, let me share my screen and with you to show my beautiful picture <laughs> so here yeah, so this is about me I this photo I took this photo in Japan on my graduation day uh, my host family Okasa Otosan you know they took me to a studio and then they took this beautiful photo so this is about me so um, because we have only an hour uh, I will take more than an hour I guess I would like to start right now so our topic is Our topic is teaching argumentative writing. So we will focus on how to teach, not how to write. So how are we going to teach argumentative writing to our students? We can teach argumentative writing not only to higher education level students, but also to our primary level students, lower secondary level students, or secondary level students. So, um, some of my, uh, like for the first and second activities that I would like to share with you, you can use them with your elementary students or lower secondary students, like those, uh, the, the beginners who are going to learn how to write argumentatively. So the, these, uh, these strategies are for beginner students. Uh, but we will also look at some strategies that are uh, higher, uh, higher level students too. In our teaching practice, um, reflect, uh, reflective practice are very essential and they are very helpful. So before we learn uh, how to write uh, argumentatively or how to teach argumentatively, let's reflect on ourselves. So I would like to invite all of you um, to write your answer in the chat box. But number one is not a question. First of all, um, let me play a music. Yes. 
Oh, what I want to think about the recent argument that you made. So, we human beings, I think this is too loud. <laughs> Incorporating music in our teaching practice can be a game changer sometimes. That's why when I ask my students to think something or uh, to reflect on their activity, I usually play some sort of music to help them to calm down and to relax. Wait, now let's get started. So uh, I would like to, to think about uh, uh, an argument that you make recently. So normally, uh, generally, we human beings, we make arguments every day, actually. For example, uh, you know, uh, some of my students, some of our students uh, might want to eat a, a lot of ice cream. So he will say, you know, you should allow me uh, to eat as much ice cream as I want, right? So they are trying to ask for what they want. And then they will say, because, you know, it will help me uh, to, to relax or to concentrate more. So they are trying to argue for what they want, right? So it can be um, uh, at home with our friends or our family, or it can also happen for us at our workplace, right? So can you please think of one recent argument that you made? You don't need to write it down right now. So just think about it. So let's go to the number two question. So now, this is very important. At that occasion, on that occasion, when you argued, what was your goal of your argument? What was your purpose of your argument? What did you want to achieve? Can you please describe it using a verb? For example, uh, to convince uh, my mom uh, to buy me more ice cream, something like that. So can you please write down the goal of your arguments that you made recently, is it to convince or is it to persuade or what did you want to do? What did you want to achieve? Can you please write it down in the chat box? Good evening, thank you so much. Thank you. So you um, you made an argument to persuade your students to study more than um, just playing games. Thank you, Sia, for sharing that. In the chat box, please, not on the uh, screen. So you are goal of argument. Why did you argue? So first of all, you need to think a recent argument. And then why did you argue? To have a solution, everyone could, satis could be satisfied or to persuade. Thank you, teacher E. To request, to convince, thank you. So now you now know that, right? When we make arguments, we have a purpose in our mind. We have a goal in our mind. Without having purpose and goal, we are going nowhere. So, I, so first of all, we need to know our goal and purpose of our argument. So let's look at this definition. Thank you so much for sharing to make my anchor understand, to convince the individual to study. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, according to Graham MacArthur Hibbert, in uh, so they wrote a book. I uh, I I took a lot of uh, re references from the book actually. So, according to them, we argue to persuade, to defeat, to negotiate, consult, debate, and resolve differences of opinions. So, this is their definition. So, to persuade me, you know, to convince someone. Uh, to accept your point of view or to change their mind or to change the uh, the policy, right? So you, you try to persuade them or you, do, you would like to defeat someone. Uh, it means that you would like to prove that um, 
something is wrong or, or something they have done is wrong or they, uh, you would like to demonstrate that um, there are some flaws in their argument. Or sometimes we use arguments to negotiate um, at what place or um, when we are doing businesses, right? So um, when you have two opposing ideas or you have different interests between two parties, in that case, you you would like to get a mutually agreeable solution. You would like to compromise between two of you. In this case, you need to make an argument, right? And even when you would like to consult, if you have a problem, you would like to make an informed decision. In that case, just saying, I have this problem and then listening, okay, you do it. So just by you know, listening to the solution, it is not, you might not get an informed decision, right? Informed solution. In that case, you might need to argue to get to the point where you can get the reliable answer. The same in debate, when you have, you know, from a discussion, we need to have argument, we need to use um, argument and then to resolve differences, right? So we have conflicting viewpoints and then we would like to find the common ground. In this case, we use argument. So these are the aims of argument. Okay, so let me check your aims again. So most of you said that you want to persuade, right? You want to persuade uh, someone to do something. Yes, so this is the aim, one of the aim of argument, correct? So now let's go to the question number three. So when you made an argument at that time, was it successful? Did you achieve your goal? Could you be able to persuade, let's say, your student to study more than playing games? So could you make a successful argument? Could you change their mind? Did you achieve it? Can you please write it in the chat box? If you achieved it, can you please reflect on that uh, occasion? Why do you think? What did you do? Why did you achieve it? Or if um, you didn't achieve it, it was not a success story. Why was it a success story? How can we make it better? Can you please take a moment to think about it and write it down in the chat box? Interesting. You give examples, your personal anecdotes. Very good. So it was a success story. Thank you, Snow. Yeah, argument, writing, support, uh, critical thinking of the students. You're right. Ah, yeah, sometimes, you know, now you realize that you need more proofs, right? Who is in? Good evening. So how did you achieve it, right? So I want you to take some time to reflect on it. Uh, even after the webinar, uh, you can take a moment to think about it again. So now let's go to the very important definition of an argument uh, by Josh Haylocks. If we would like to have a successful argument, we need to know this definition. So in our argument, we have a claim, right? So now uh, I, I told you a story, right? My student claims that um, he wanted to have as much ice cream as he wanted, right? So it is. it was his claim, but if, if he didn't explain why he wanted it, it is just a claim, it is not an argument. But he continued because having a lot of ice cream um, make me happy or it helps me to relax and to concentrate more on, um, on my study, right? So he is trying to make a claim, he is trying to make a cake case to support his claim. He's not saying that I want this, I want that, please do it for me. So why do you want it? Because I want it. So it is not an argument. So you need to give evidence, you need to explain, you need to give reason to make it into a 
successful argument, right? So whenever we have a claim, we need to make sure that we make a case to support our claim. Now let's go to the next one. So how can we make a case to support our claim? If we apply these elements or argument, it may be as, uh, you know, your unsuccessful story can change into a successful story. So these are the game changers of argumentative writing or arguments. So there are six uh, parts. So the first one is a claim. Of course, we have a claim now, right? So we want to have an ice cream or you want to, you want to, um, make your, your student understand, right? So studying, uh, taking more time to study is better than playing, right? So this is your claim. But as an educated person, whenever we want to make a claim, we need to tell ourselves, hold on, I need to find evidence. Our claims should be based on evidence or reason. So that's why we need to find evidence or reason first before we talk about our claim to the other person. So evidence and reasons are very important. So please think about, uh, go back to your, your story again, right? So you had a claim. Did you give them some evidence or reason, right? So you need to think about it. And okay, so you have evidence and reason. Sometimes they are enough. Okay, they are accepted when they are enough, but sometimes they might not be enough at the time, we might want to support our evidence or reason by providing a warrant. So what is a warrant? It is a general principle that people accept. It's like a, a fact, right? It's a warrant. So this warrant explains how our evidence is relevant to our claim. So this evidence can support this claim because of this general rule or general principle. So we need to provide a warrant to make a stronger argument. And if sometimes it will be enough. So having a claim and evidence and warrant might be enough for some cases, for some scenario, but sometimes it might not be enough. There might be other arguments, right? Opposing arguments. As uh, you know that you always need to consider your audience, right? So you, you know that uh, this might not be strong enough to convince them. In that case, you can have another support, which is backing. So backing can be extended definition or, uh, you know, criteria, you know, um, or examples to support your awareness. So it may become more specific. Right, so they cannot deny anymore. Right, so backing can be like, "Hey, warrant, I'm here. I have your back." Um, so sometimes evidence and reason might be enough. Sometimes you might need a warrant, or sometimes you might need backing to make your argument stronger. But even when we are writing research paper, we cannot say that what we have found out is, uh, you know, hundred percent true. Right, there might be uh, you know, exceptions. That's why sometimes to sound, you know, to 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 show that uh, we acknowledge um, other people' points of view and opinions, we need to use qualifications to qualify our claim and our warrant. Right. So qualification. What are they? So they this will show probability. For example, um. Mm, Ice cream can probably make people happy, something like that. So we use probably or uh, like uh, instead of saying people, we can say many people. So if we say people, it means it means that everywhere, right? We know that there might be some exception. So by using many, you know, many people believe that, but there might be some who don't believe this. So we use qualification uh, in our in writing our claim and our warrant to show that we understand you might have different kind of view. But after that, we can use rebate or counter arguments. So now we know that there are competing claims, right? opposing claims. So we acknowledge that. Yes, I understand that you, you, you might believe this. But however, 
you know, in other cases, you might be right. But in this case, I am right because of this reason. So we use rebuttals and counter arguments. So these are the elements of arguments. I muted myself. So let, let's look at this. Um, so we have a claim. We have a claim. Our evidence. So what are uh, evidence? So they are data. So data can be um, primary data where, you know, if you do research, right, you some of the time, most of the time you will use your primary data, right? You will do um, surveys or you will ask uh, questions, you will interview, right? And then you use those data. Those are primary data. But most of the time when we write argumentative writing, we might not be able to use our primary data to write an essay, right? So we can use secondary data. We can say, you know, a research study show that, right? Uh, a research study uh, uh, made by a Harvard, a Harvard professor uh, argued this, right? So we can use the secondary data to show our, uh, uh, as, as a proof. And then this is the end. Uh, so our evidence support our claim. To support our evidence, we use variants. So whereas and evidence, they support each other, right? So whereas mean rules, general truth, or is laws or scientific principles or studies, or you know, you can even make your own definition. But when you make your definition, you need to be thoughtfully argued, right? So you can use whereas like that. When you need um, extra support, you can use backing. So a specific example, right, to uh, justify the whereas. So this is more specific. Uh, so back in where support, where rent, our evidence and our claim. And qualification, qualification can be in the claim and it can also be in where rent too. And repartage is to show that you are aware of opposing views and then to show that, you know, you are writing is balanced and you are fair to the readers. You consider them, okay? You take... Uh, you take them into consideration. You take their points of view into consideration. So this is the work of repeaters. I hope you're following me so far. Is it clear enough? Thank you. Yes. Yes, we can hear well. Okay. So if you have any question, you, you, you can ask me later, okay? Okay, let, let, let's go to the next one. So today, so now you have learned um, the elements of uh, arguments, right? So as a teacher, before we teach how to write, we need to know why we write, uh, you know, um, what are the elements, how to write it, right? So throughout this webinar, we were, you will not be just listening, right? If you're just here, you, most of the time we'll forget, right? Um, if we do it together, we will understand it more. So we will write together, we will discuss, right? So we will, there will be a lot of discussion going on. So now let's look at this uh, picture. So look at this photo. So this, this is a lady and here the man seems to be dead. Right. Yeah, what is going on? Here is the stove or it is, you know, they might be cooking something. He has a glass in his hand. Yeah. So, so now after looking at the photo, I would like to request all of you to read this story silently. Take a moment to read this story. So when you ask your student to read the story, you might, you might want to have them with some of the vocabulary, right? So here, I would like to have you with some vocabulary here. Um, so when she tore out of the house after a tiff, so a tiff me, um, this word is very important. If we don't understand, you know, if we don't know this word, um, we might not get the story. That's why I'm trying, I am going to explain this, right? So tiff is a slight argument, right? Um, usually um, between, um, friends or people who are in love, right? Husband and wife or boyfriend, girlfriend. So they have a, a slight argument. So they had a tiff. And another word is uh, autopsy, right? So this is 
um, they it's an examination of a dead body uh, to discover the cause of uh, the cause of the death. So it is autopsy. So take a moment to read the story and to examine uh, the photo. I hope that you're finished reading the story. Okay. So the first thing we need, we would, uh, I would like you to do is to decide if Queenie, right? Uh, she is she telling us a, a, a true story, or I mean, like, is she telling a lie, or is she telling the truth? Like that, the the topic is slip or trip, right? So. Did he slip by himself or did she trip him to fall down? So after reading the story, what do you think? Is she telling the truth? If she's telling the truth, can you please say yes? Or if she's lying, can you please, I mean, can you please write no? Yes, he slipped. Thank you. So, so you think that she is telling the truth? How about the rest of you? Do you think that she is telling the truth or she is telling a lie? Oh, so oh, he slipped. Mm -hmm. Based on autopsy, yeah, he slipped. I would like to have some um, opposing claims, opposing idea, different ideas. He was drunk, therefore leading to slip on stairs that caused the death of Arthur. Thank you. Thank you so much. So most of you think that he slipped. So Queenie is telling the truth. Snow said he was caged. So now we have two different ideas. I love it. So I would like to have you know different opinions from all of you. So can you please write down a little bit more quickly? Um, he was caged. Sudnadi R. Something more to it. Ah, interesting. I would like to read. Since Queenie arrived 10 minutes before them, she could have called ambulance immediately. That's interesting. I would like to give it a hat. I will give you uh, 30 more se uh, seconds to think. So she said, like, this is, um, she is, Queenie is uh, five feet six uh, inches tall. So she's tall, right? And, and then she is uh, 110 pounds. She weigh, right? 110 pounds, wow. Yeah, uh, not that much, I guess. And Queenie is a side to behold and clasp. And when she toured the house after a tiff with her husband, uh, she went to the country club and then, you know, she party maybe. And then she left the club. And then she invited some of her friends to have one more drink. And then when they got her house, 
10 minutes after Queenie. So Queenie arrived her house 10 minutes earlier than other people, right? And then when they arrived, she said, something terrible happened. Other slipped and fell on the stairs. He was coming down the stairs for another drink. And he still had the glass in his hand. And I think he's dead. Mm. Someone hit his head, causing him to fall on the stairs. He was key. Uh, someone had plotted the crime from the visitor. Yes. Okay, so now... Uh, Queenie don't know CPR, maybe, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the, there's a possibility, yeah, they argue and fight, right? So maybe she pushed him. Might be, might be, right? So um, so now I found out that you have evidence, right? Some of you have already have evidence. So you have a claim. You have a claim. You said that um he might slip. He might slip. Um because he's drank, right? And Sam said that, no, um, he is tripped, let's say, right? He's tripped uh, because uh, they had an argument and then Queenie arrived 10 minutes earlier. So, you know, this is her husband or her boyfriend, right? So she had 10 minutes, she might have called an ambulance. So these are your evidence. So now we have a claim and we have evidence so I would like to pick, I would like to pick um Mirav, Mirav Cat, right? I'm sorry if I pronounce your name incorrectly. Um idea. So let's look at her idea. I'm sorry. I let, let, let's look at his or her idea. So I think there is something more to it. Since Queenie arrived 10 minutes before them, she could have called ambulance immediately. So everybody, what do you think about her idea? Do you think that uh, her evidence, uh, we should consider her evidence, uh, her evidence might be correct to prove her claim that um, he is uh, tripped. She is telling a lie. Do you believe, uh, do you agree with her? If you believe, uh, if you agree with her, can you please, uh, show you know heart emoji. Nobody agree with her. <laughs> Let me check. Do you agree with her or not? So do you agree with, um, I will copy this one. I hope you see my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see. Okay, so this is her argument. So she said that I think there is something more to it. So if she arrived 10 minutes before them, so she could have called ambulance immediately. So so there might be something, right? So he might not slip. So did did you do you agree with her? Do you think that uh, her evidence is solid? Okay, if you don't ag agree with the idea a lot, we are going to look at another idea. How about this? How about this? Uh, she said that. Um, he was coming down the stairs for another drink. He still had the glass in his hand. 
and I think he's dead. And then the glass is here, right? The glass is impaired. So if someone fall down the stair, do you think that uh, they can hold the glass like that and that it is not broken? What do you think? So I would like to make a claim here. I mean, my claim might not be right, okay? So I'm just trying to make a claim out of this sentence. So I would like to make a claim. I think Queenie might be probably lying. So what is my evidence? My evidence is the glass in his hand. So this is my evidence. So how can I make my evidence? How can I show that my evidence is relevant to the claim? We, I will make a warrant. I will, I will use a, a generally accepted principle. So I will say, when people, when people fall down the stair, you know, um, they will drop whatever they are holding, right? To grip something, to have a, to to have a grip on something, right? Um, they might not hold onto that glass. And the other thing is the glass is stay intact, right? So this is my argument. So I have a claim. Queenie is lying. My evidence, the glass. He is holding the glass. My warrant, there, there, there is a fact, right? Uh, there is a rule, generally accepted rule. When people fall down the stair, they might not hold onto the glass. They will just drop whatever they are holding and then they were trying to grip something. So everybody, what do you think of my arguments? Do you think that my argument is acceptable? And my argument is strong enough. If you think that my argument is strong enough, can you please give me a heart or thumb up? Thank you for some of your hearts. Thank you. Some of you give, already have given me hearts. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Oh, let's read the comments here. Thank you. Yeah, it should have been broken, right, Nicole? Yeah. Yeah, it's a first degree, my, oh my God, yeah, yeah. Yes. Argu yeah, so she might have a motive, right? Because they had an argument before. So here, I have shown you how to make an argument. We cannot just say, yes, um, she is telling the truth. No, she is lying, right? Okay, so she's lying. So to me, I think she's lying. Um, so this is my claim. So I have an evidence, the class in his hand, and then I give you a warrant according to as a rule, right? Generally accepted rule. So this is my evidence. They he might drop, right? People drop whatever they are holding, right? So this is my argument. So here I will make my argument like this. Before I write my claim, we, I need before we write a, our claim, we need to look for the evidence first. So I will say, my our evidence is, other state has a glass in his hand. So this is our evidence. So our warrant is, as a rule, when people fall downstairs, they drop uh, what whatever they are carrying to save themselves. This is our warrant. And then I make a claim. So she is probably lying. So I use probably here, because I know that, you know, here, some of you already have uh, opposing ideas, right? Some of you uh, thinks that, uh, think that it, she is telling the truth, right? So we have, we, we, we don't have uh, the same idea as the same opinion at this time. So I understand that. That's why I use probably. Actually, um, Qualification, so we can use these words to qualify our claim or warrant to show that there might be opposing ideas. 
Okay, so probably, presumably, very likely, almost certainly, some people, many people like that, and there's a lot more to qualify our claim and warrant. Actually, uh, this is a group work. I would like, we don't have much time, but I would like to uh, make sure that we can apply it in our classroom. So I would like to take um, about five minutes for this group work, if that is okay with you. So now I will make a breakout rooms where maybe three or four participants um, are in the group. Um, so your group is an investigative team. Okay, so you need to determine whether she's telling the truth or a lie. I might not be right, okay? Um, so you might think that she's telling the truth and then you need to find the evidence and you need to make rule or warrant. I hope all of you understand how to make warrant, okay? Warrant me is like generally accepted rule here in this case. And when you when you write warrant, I want you to start with as a rule. So now I am teaching my students the language stretchers that they need to use in their arguments, right? So now you are giving a rule. So please start with as a rule. As a rule, when people fall down, and then you need to use general language. We cannot say when you fall down, when other fall down. So instead of using like I, you, uh, you know, first pass, second pass, and we need to use the general term, okay? So to make it as a rule, to make it a rule. So I want you to go to the breakout room. Or Siany, or um, Siany, can you please create a breakout room where there might be three or four participants? And yes. uh, we'll give you three minutes, right? To find an evidence and to write a warrant for your claim and write it down on a Microsoft Word or wherever it is. And then when you come back to the main room, I want you to copy, to copy like your claim, your evidence and your warrant that you have written together in the group, okay? So we will have to take a lot of time in our real classroom, but here, because all of us are teachers, I think it is okay for us to take three minutes. So Sayani, uh, if you have finished, uh, creating the rooms, uh, you can open the room. Uh, okay, so everyone, you can take a screenshot of this story. Uh, and you can take a screenshot of uh, this assignment. But you have three minutes, I'm really sorry. I'm ready to open the room, teacher. Okay, everybody, let's go to our breakout rooms. So, oh, I would like to I would like to visit their rooms here. Yeah, you, you can share. But it's that that please join. Okay. So I don't need to join, right? To room six. Okay. Um. Yes. You you can just visit there. Mm. You are a co-host, right? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Sia. Yes. You so let's go to yes. our breakout rooms, everybody, and then discuss whether she's lying or she's telling the truth. What is the evidence? How are you write a warrant to support your evidence? And if you have different ideas, try to convince you know, your, your partner, your group member by giving warrants. Okay, room two, all the members are in the room two now. Room three, they are going. Room seven, yes.
I think I'm going to take a lot more time. Yes. If we have got like about 10 minutes to discuss in the group, you know, we might have uh, the product. Now, I realize that, you know, we might not have any product from the group work because we just have three minutes. It's fine. So I'm just showing you how to uh, make it work um, in our classroom. So if everybody is back, let's go back to my slide. Can you see my screen? Okay. Yes, we can see. So because of uh, the time limitation, uh, you, I, I realized that you didn't have time to discuss. <laughs> so, you know, in our class, you know, we will ask our students, you know, to discuss. So before we ask our student to discuss, we need to show example, right? So we need to be the model in front of our students. So I did that, right? I show you how to do it. After that, you can collect those evidence and warrant. You can say first, this is the evidence and this is the warrant. Second, that's why I believe that she is probably lying. So in this way, you can teach you are primary school level students or lower secondary school level students how to make an argument using claim, evidence, and warrants. Okay, so this is for uh, beginner students. So here, I would like us to note that whenever we would like to make a claim, we need to hold on, hold on, don't make a claim fast. Let's search for the evidence first, right? So we need to begin with the evidence before we make a claim so that we can decide uh, what claims that we can legitimately make, right? So um, they can be the, you know, reliable claims. They are the truth, right? And then we need to uh, support our claim with reason and evidence and warrants too. So we need to remember that we need to, when we think about arguments, we need to begin with the evidence. That is the point. Okay, so this, uh, the activity I have shown you before is called forensic scenario. What is forensic scenario? It is just a crime scene, you know? So you can use a crime scene or a detective story or a detective, uh, a video, a movie, you know, short video, and you can show them, right? You can show the photo and you can ask them to look at it. And then you can ask them, what do you think? What happened there? Why do you think so? What is the evidence? Why do you think that this evidence supports your claim? So you can have, you can have your student to think logically and critically. So that's why at the beginning of this webinar, I mentioned that we are going to use dialogues to teach argumentative writing. So we are going to ask questions, right? To guide our student thinking, right? So to support them, we can use this kind of forensic scenario. So that is the first, this is the second activity. So the first activity is reflective practice, right? So we reflect on our um, experience. So now the student, so according to research, um, people, even, you know, university students are afraid to write argumentative essay, right? Argument, they are afraid of argumentative writing, but it is not that difficult, right? If you, if you use reflective practice, they can see that, oh, argument, we, we are making arguments every day. We just need to use this element, right? And then this is the second one, forensic uh, scenario and the forensic, um, scenario and yes whenever we have we have a lesson right so on our advertisement we mentioned that i will also share you 
I will also share how to set uh, argument writing lesson goal, right? Uh, so I, I mentioned that. That's why. So here I'm, I'm showing you how to set our lesson goal, right? So when we plan our lesson, we need to have clear objective and clear goals. How can we make it? So we cannot just say that the students will do this, right? So yeah, it is not enough. So in our lesson goal, lesson objectives, we need to have two parts. The first one is how the learning will be assessed. So like formative assessment, right? So in every lesson, we need to think about our formative assessment. So how in our goal, learning lesson goal, we need to have this part, how we will assess their learning. How can we know that they are really learning or not? And the second part is, what, what is the instruction? What kind of instruction should be included, right, in our lesson? So whenever we set our goal, we need to have these two key points. So here, my lesson goal is, after examining the slip and trip story, so this is very specific, right? So they will look at slip and slip and trip story and the cartoon picture. So that is what I include in my instruction. Children will write arguments, what they will do if Queenie is telling the truth or lie. So that is what they are going to do. And the argument must provide. So now we are going to assess what they can do. So if their argument provide a claim with support, including four or five pieces of evidence, and warrants explaining how the evidence supports the claim and how they are how the evidence is relevant to the claim and then whether they can use qualification about the limitation of the claim and warrants so i will look at them so if my student can provide evidence and warrants to to support out their claim and they can use qualification they are doing really well they are learning and then uh, in my instruction, I will tell them what they need to do, right? So you need to provide um, evidence and warrants to support your claim. So that is my instruction. So what I need to do when I am teaching and how, how can I assess their learning? So all these two parts should be included in our lesson goals. Is it clear for all of us, all of you? Yes. So this is not yes, just teacher. for uh, thank you so much. Yes, teacher. Thank you. Thank you. So this is not just for argument writing lesson goals. This is for all the other lesson goals, right? So how assessments and the instruction. So let's go to the third activity. Okay. Um so now it is almost an hour, but I still have a lot to go. I hope you will be happy to stay with me. For a little bit longer. Um, so yes, that's okay. Thank you so much for your understanding. Okay, so now let's look at this photo, this cartoon. Who is the mother of the boy? Okay, I should have hide that. So, so okay, so now we are not going to do the activity. <clears throat> So uh, actually I have created a Padlet and then I wanted to share it with you and I wanted you to write down in the Padlet, but we'll skip the activity, right? So here we were just looking at the answer, right? So for the time, for the sake of time limitation. Um, so here in this uh, in this photo, uh, the mermaid is the mother of the boy. Why? So this woman is a woman, right? And she, because how can we know that? She is not able to breathe wear under water, right? She's not able to breathe wear. She seems to be struggling, but the boy is smiling, so it means that she's not. He is not struggling, right, with his breathing. So it means that he has got uh he has got girls. So both uh, the mermaid and the boy has girls to, to breathe under water. So it is a fact, right? So the fact that he can breathe under water is a sign that. So she is uh, his mom, right? So here, my claim is, 
My claim is the marmite is the mother. So what is my evidence? My evidence is he can breathe well and the water, right? So and I use fat. The fact that um he can breathe in the water means that they share the same features, right? That's why they 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 are mother and son, their relationship. Um so we can use this kind of brain teaser. This is called brain teaser. So to help our students to give a reason, right? So they might they might be able to tell you, okay, so the mommy is the mom, but most of most of our students or some of our students might not be able to articulate the reason and reference. So in that case, we might need to help them with the language. Right, so we might need to jump in and help them with the language, right? So they need to be able to give reason as evidence, and then they need to provide parents as like so. It is a fact, right? It is a rule. So here we use a fact as a parent. So this is the second activity to teach our Jean Lena how to write argument, write argument essay or argument story or letter, or yeah. So here for this goal, for this activity, actually I wanted to ask you uh, to write uh, the lesson goal, but um, I will just share it right now, but you can practice it later on your own. So here, uh, how will the learning be assessed? So we will see if they can provide this, right? And then what will, what will I include in my instruction? I will include uh, this, uh, Photo, who is the mother of the boy cartoon picture. And I would tell them that, you know, uh, they need to find evidence and then they need to explain how the evidence supports the claim, right? So th this will be in my instruction. So this is my lesson goal. So this is our third activity today. Um, so far, so good, everybody. Are you following me? Yes, we are following yes, you. Yeah. yeah, that's, we are. Yes, you. you are okay to continue, right? Even yes. Okay, Thank you. So let me continue. So we don't need a break, right? Is it okay not to take a break? That's okay, teacher. Thank you. Okay, now let's go to the second part. So we have learned that, so these are the aims of, these are the aims of our arguments. If we would like to achieve our aims, so this is the revision, okay, so that we can remember. So if we would like to achieve our aims, we need to make a case to support our claim. So we need to use evidence and warrants, right? So, now is your time to share with me. I would like to learn from you too. Everybody should learn from each other, right? So can you please share some other activities to help our students with argumentative writing? So I have shared three activities already. So can you please think of any other activities to share with us? So we need to remember that we are helping our students to become logical thinkers or critical thinkers. So our activities should help them to achieve that goal, right? To make, uh, to help them to begin critical thinker and logical thinker. So what other activities can we, uh, can we perform? Can we have for our students? Mm. Jen Bot, thank you, Snow You. Debate, very good. Debate, yeah. So, right, you know, um, actually, it is one of the goals, right? Yeah, having debate, they are very good way to argue. So, when, when they want to make a, I want, uh, when they want to make a case, right? Make a case, they always need to have evidence, wherein, backing, you know. Yeah, debate is a good way. And what else? Research, 
Very good. Very good. That we are going to learn about it a little bit tonight. Public speaking. Oh, yeah. Survey. Yes, I agree with you. Yeah, we can ask our students to do survey as part of argumentative writing. Yes, you're right. So we can use Google Docs, debate, classroom research, presentation. Very good. Case work. Yeah, case study. Yeah, the appears few case study. Yes. Mm. Interview, right? Interview can be a part of argumentative writing process. Course work. Yes, I understand what you mean. Yes, yes, yeah. So we can use um we can use course work. Um especially to help our students with the background information, right? Um, so if they are reading, like if they're studying as a thematic unit on like history, like uh, Hitler, you can ask them to argue, right? Um, is he is a re hero or not, right? So they will find evidence and now we're back in. So it will be quite challenging. But, you know, it's a good way, right? So we can use uh, the knowledge, the experience they had in other um, study or other lessons. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, all of you are correct. Uh, everything you have said, actually, I agree with all of them. Yes. So as I mentioned, we need to help them to become critical thinkers, right? We will have to use a lot of dialogues, a lot of conversation, a lot of group works. But when we have group works, make sure that we have prepared them really well before they go into their crew, right? And start their group work. So we need to, you know, as the teachers, you need to model them, right? So in the group work, they need to follow these three steps. So you need, we need to do all of these steps in the main group, you know, in the as a whole classroom, only after they realize, they understand what to do in the group, we can ask them to go into your into their group and then conduct their group work. So now we search. So for our secondary level students now, or even for the uh, university students, we can ask our students to look for the problems that they care about. So those problems should be researchable problems. We need to look at, you know, at the scope. You know, is it is it too big? Or, you know, uh, is it specific enough to perform? Is it durable? Or can we accomplish it? Um, you know, in the allocate time, during the allocate time. So uh, we need to consider all of those things. So the, the problem should be researchable. How can we how can we know that it is researchable or not? First of all, the first step is we need to identify the problem. So what problem are, uh, that they would like to solve, right? Uh, what problem they care about? And is it specific enough? So we will have to go through a lot of dialogues and conversation. And then we need to clarify the problems. We might need to suck, uh, we, we might need to seek for expert opinion sometimes, right? After we have got the title, the topic, the problem that we would like to solve, we need to plan the investigation, right? So how are we going to investigate, right? So are we going to um, survey, right? Are we going to use survey method? How are we going to uh, call it the party spent? So what kind of you know uh, methods are we going to use? Are we going to use like snowballing method or random sampling? Like, so those assembly methods, right? At university level, your students know about it, like random sampling or uh, snowballing. So what kind of assembly methods are they going to use if they are going to use survey? Or are they going to interview? Or if um, we cannot, uh, if we don't have time, you know, for our 
uh, you know, to have our own primary data, we can also use secondary data. In that case, we can ask our student, okay, so to solve this problem, to, to propose, right? So let's say um, um, our student would like to change a school policy, a school policy. So we don't have much time, you know, to do uh, research on our own. So what can we do? So we will go for, we'll go and look for secondary data. So what can we do? We'll go and look for research paper. We'll read research paper. So here in your group, you have five members. So how about looking for, uh, how about searching for five research paper? And then what do they say, right? So when you look for the research paper, so what are the keywords that we need to type in, right? So you plan the investigation process and then, and then the student conduct the investigation. So throughout the process, the teacher should be with them. The teacher should be there to support them, to jump into whatever they need your help, right? To scout for their learning. After they have done their uh, in investigation, now is the time for them to write. So it is very easy to say, but you know we need a lot of practice to do this, right? So this is how we can help our you know higher level students uh, to write argumentatively. This is one uh, one of the activities. So now, um, let's look at this one. So now our student, our student found that um, they would like to change uh, our school policy. So they have only 30 minutes recess time, right? Uh, they would like to have an hour. So they, their claim is, you know, students should have more recess time at school. So this is their claim. This is their claim, right? This is the problem that they, they would like to solve. This, so they want to submit this paper, you know, to the principal. Right, so they need to look for the evidence first. So they have already read a lot of research article, and then they realize that, you know, those evidence support their claim. So they said that numerous studies. So we have read one hundred studies. Okay, so they show that, uh, you know, increased physical activities through the um, extended research periods can have positive impact on on our cognitive function and academic performance. So they use. Um, secondary data, right? Um, so this is in general. After that, uh, they use a rule, right? Generally accepted rule. Physically, uh, this is a scientific fact actually. Physically, uh, physical activity is linked to improved uh, blood flow to the brain. So that's why it enhances it enhances. Concentration, memory, and overall cognitive abilities. So this is the warrant. Because this is a scientific principle, scientific fact. Everybody can accept that these days, right? And then they know that, you know, they are writing this to their principle who is very educated. So the principle might not be convinced just by having evidence and warrants. So they have a back in here. They use specific example to back up their warrant. So they said that countries with successful education systems such as Finland, so very specific. So they prioritize breaks and recess because they recognize the importance of physical activity, right? For to enhance students' uh, cognitive function. So this is very specific. And now we understand there might be opposing view. So that's that's why we said that opponents might argue that longer recess periods would take away our valuable instruction of time. Um, so I know that you might argue like this, but however, research shows that, you know, the benefits of increased physical activity uh, on cognitive function, you know, can compensate uh, for any loss of instruction at time. So I, I, I understand that you are worried about, you know, the loss of instruction at time. Don't worry. You know, according to research, you know, this can compensate. If you give us more research time, you know, it, it can compensate what, uh, you know, the, 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 the loss of instruction at time. So don't worry about it. So that's why in conclusion, you should consider to give up more research time. Right? So this is how we can argue. 
you know, um, if you have already bought, it is very easier, you know, to just uh, show you how, you know, these sentences, but when we start writing, we will take, we need to take a lot, uh, we need to take a lot of time, I understand that. But here, as a tip, I wanted to give you a tip. Before we write these sentences, we need to have outline, very clear outline, and we need to stick to our outline, right? So what is my claim? What is the evidence? So we need to have outline. Okay, my evidence is, my evidence is these studies, right? So these studies show that, you know, extended research periods can have positive impact on our cognitive function. This is my evidence. And then what is my uh, warrant? So this is my warrant. So you need to have the outline first before you write the whole uh, essay. Actually, this is just one paragraph. So you can have... Um, more evidence, right, to support your claim. So this is one claim, right? Um, students should have more research time at school. So I just show you only one evidence. My evidence is um, if you give us more research time, it can increase our physical activity. So it can have positive impacts on our cognitive function. So this is one, argue, uh, one evidence. In each of your uh, argue, argument, you can have an evidence, a warrant, and a backing. You might not need to have counter arguments all the time in your claim, uh, in, in your paragraph, right? So you can mention another evidence. Let's say, so some study uh, have, uh, have shown that, you know, uh, so if you give recess time to the students, it can also help with their physical health. So this can be another evidence. And then you look for the warrant back in. And then there can be another evidence like, you know, it can also help with the mental uh, well-being. So it can be another evidence, right? And then you can look for warrants and back in. After that, you can you can see the um back uh the, the, the counter argument. So you don't need to include counter arguments all the time in every paragraph. I hope you are following me and uh, my presentation is clear enough for all of you. Are you okay? Sure, teacher. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. It's clear. Thank you so much. So, and after that, you know, normally, um. Not normally, like, like most of the time, it is better if you can, if you just write the introduction at last, you know. um, You can write your introduction at the beginning if you have got the outline, a clear outline that you will not change at all. So if you won't change your outline, you can write your introduction. But if you're not that sure, maybe you might need to consider to write your introduction later. Because sometimes when we write assignments, you know, um, it's like, uh, you know, uh, 8,000 was assignment, and so on the way, you might want to change, right? So, you know, we will have to edit our introduction again and again. It is okay if you need to edit your introduction, don't worry. But in your introduction, you need to include the problem or the topic, and then you need to provide detailed feedback, or detailed background, and a piece of statement. So this is our goal for that activity. So we have learned how to do it. Uh, this is the final one. Uh, actually, please, please mute yourself. Uh, I would like to mute all of you. Sorry. Okay. So we have done, we have planned four activities today. So in all of our activities, we need to be co-authors of our students. So we need to co-author with our students. So we need to write together with them. We cannot just ask them, this is the strategy, use it, now write it. We cannot do that. We need to write, uh, write those essays and letters, you know, um, documents together with our students, um, at least for two or three activities before we can let them do on their own. Right, so that they can they they can we can schedule them really well. So we need to be 
they are co-authors. So when we co-author with our students, we need to follow these steps. So throughout the process, we need to ask questions to get several contribution, right? Not just one contribution. We need to wait for more answer, not just one answer from only one student all the time, right? So we need to ask a lot of questions. And then we need to be alert what they know and what they don't know. And yes, we can give suggestions, but at the end, they need to voice, they need to make sure that they voice in their final decision. Uh, yes, it is very important to work slowly. This can be, this can take about, you know, our final, uh, our final activity, right? Uh, researchable problems uh, might take about three weeks. It, it can be a three week project. So we need to work slowly and systematically so that, you know, um, our students understand, you know, why, why they are doing this, right? The reason behind each decision. And then we also need to help them with their language, right? Their synthetic stretcher. So, so like I, I mentioned that, please write your warrant by using as a rule, right? And then you need to use general what like people, not he, she, you, other, like that. So you might need to help them with the synthetic stretchers too. And then we might want to review by revising, right, what they have developed throughout the process. So this is how we can co-author with our students. So um, I have read um, some of your, you know, uh, questions in the fall. So you said that uh, how to have your struggling writer, right? So. Our students might be struggling um, for two reasons. So the first one is um, they don't have, uh, they don't know much about the topic. If they don't know much about the topic, they might be struggling or they might lack confidence in their, in themselves to write, right? So generally there might be two reasons. So in that case, to solve that problem, like as a quick fix, we can ask them to write co uh, collaboratively with their peers, right? So we, we, we create groups in the groups. So we need to make sure that, you know, uh, there might be a lead, uh, a someone, a student uh, who can facilitate the group, right? And then there might be student who needs help and then the other students like that, right? We create the groups and then they can write col uh, collaboratively. So um, because like they will have a lot of conversation, so they might be more, more a little bit more motivated, right? Uh, to write more. Or for a long-term problem solution, we can connect their writing assignments whenever we want them to write to the books they are reading, like the course book they are reading, right? So in the course book, in, in one unit, they are they are reading about Hitler, let's say. Um, so we can ask them to argue about that, right? Is he a good leader? Is he courageous enough? So if he is courageous, um, why do you think so, what are the reasons? What are the evidence to show that he is courageous? So why do you think that this evidence support our claim, your claim that he is courageous? So what is the general rule, right? So and now, can you please give me a specific example to show that your warrant and your evidence are relevant to your claim, right? So we can ask them to think. So they have already got enough background information from the books, so they might be able to argue a lot better, right? So this is um, how, ah, another one is, uh, uh, yes, we have mentioned it before. We can ask them to select, to choose the topic that they are interested in, that they strongly believe, you know, they have strong opinion, right? So if you if they know the topic really well, um, 
they might want to write a lot more right in their writing class so this is how we can pay our students knowledge about the topic if you think that they might be struggling with that so now we have learned how to teach right how to teach um our student argumentative writing so now this is uh to sum up those uh, those uh, strategies, so we have learned how to teach argument of fact, argument of policy, and argument of judgment. So there are three types of argument. So when we make an argument, we need to know what kind of argu argument we are making. Are we making argument of fact? Are we making argument of policy? That are, are we trying to convince like someone to change the policy? So are we making argument or judgment? So it means like whether uh, uh, something is ethical or something is moral or immoral, something is right or wrong, you know. Um, so this is argument or judgment. So the first one is argument of fact. So let's say the art revolves around the clay, uh, 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 around the sand, is the argument of fact. Uh, actually, it is not an argument, it's just a claim, right? So the art revolves around the sand is a claim. This is a is a claim of fact. But if you would like to make it an argument, you know, there might be people who believe that you know, um, you know, the art is you know just you know, not moving at all, right? Um, maybe the sand revolves around the art. So you, you need to argue. So. You need to include the elements or arguments. Only after you add the elements or argument, it can begin an argument. If just if you just write this sentence, it is just a claim. This you just say, you know, this is what I think. That's it. No, this is just not an argument. And the next one is the government should implement stricter regulations on carbon emissions to combat climate change. So you are asking all the governments in the world, right? So they should implement this. So you are trying to convince them to change the policy, right? So this is a claim to make it an argument as you share, you need to use the elements. And the final one is argument or judgment, right? Whether uh, you know the use of renewable energy sources is more ethical or not. So you need to make it, you need to make judgment, right? Is it ethical or not? It is moral or not? It is right or wrong? So this is argu argument or judgment. So whenever you are trying to make an argument, you need to know what kind of arguments we are making. And then we need to use the strategy that will help us to achieve our goal. So now we have learned some strategies. Actually, there is no one side fit of solution. So there are so many ways, so many strategies available to teach argumentative writing. I just um, try to present four strategies here um, in in an hour, uh, now in about an hour and a half. Yeah. And you can you can use other strategies too. But anyway, at the end of the student work, so now it is our time, right? It is our time to provide clear feedback. It is very time consuming, I know. You know, as so many of us, you know, you know, sometimes might not want to do it. You know, it takes so much time. You cannot just say good or bad or you, you get 10 out of 10, right? So it takes a lot of time. You need to look at, uh, so this time I'm going to look at uh, the language or this time I'm going to look at the stretcher. But if our focus is on teaching argumentative writing, we should mainly focus on the presence of the elements, the argument elements, and their relevancy and effectiveness. You know, if they, if our students can use those elements and they are relevant and they are effective, yes, you know, it is, you know, your lesson is successful, right? They are learning really well. Um, but they might make some mistakes, of course. In that case, you can suggest ways to move it forward, right? how to improve right? They are thinking or they are writing. But we need to make sure that we always emphasize what they have done really well. 
So this is how we can provide clear feedback. So these are the resources that I have used to prepare for this presentation. I have read this book, uh, the whole book from cover to cover, but for some of the books, I just I have just read some um, units that is relevant to my presentation. So from today's webinar, we have learned um, four activities, right? But what is more important is not is not those activities actually. You can create your own activities, you know. But what is more important is we need to make sure that in our class we need to uh, we need to have reflective practice, not just for our students but for ourselves too. And we we need to make sure that our students make a case to support their claim. And we we are trying to have our students to become critical and logical thinkers. And we need to base students' knowledge about the topic first before we ask them to jump and write on their own. So these are the key takeaways. Thank you so much for your participation and for your attention. Thank you. Thank you so much, Teacher Linda. Thank, Thank you, Teacher. So now is the time for question and answer session. So teachers and educators, you can unmute yourself to ask the question to the speaker directly, or you can type it in the chat, and I will deliver this question to the speaker. Now is the Q&A time. I hope this is helpful. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Mohammed. Thank you, Nin. Thank you, everyone. Oh, thank you so much. So does anyone have a question to raise? This webinar is really interesting and comprehensive and really practical. Oh, yeah. If you have any question, you can ask. Thank you, too. Any okay. questions? You can type it in the chat box. Exactly. Maybe this is like very, very clear that there is no more question. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking now. <laughs> okay, yes, so I think. Oh, yes, yeah, go ahead. Uh, oh, Rina. Uh, here is a question, teacher. Peter. So, teacher, can we teach argumentative writing to young learners? Definitely, yes. Um, According to, you know, so this is a book I have read from cover to cover. So, this is written by uh, Josh Haylocks. So he argued a lot here. So many teachers might think that, you know, argumentative writing, argumentative writing is for, uh, you know, higher level students. Actually, it is not, right? So we, we should actually, we should teach our students, our general students, how to write argumentatively since primary level. So the, the two activities, um, no, no, if the three activities that I have shown you today is for general students, right? Re reflective practice, you know, you can ask uh, your, your students, you know, have you, you can explain them first, right? So, so for, for our Yen and our students, maybe they just, we can just let them know that uh, we use arguments uh, to persuade, right? To persuade uh, the other party, um, our mom or our teacher uh, to do something for us or to allow us to do something. Um, and then we can teach them like three elements of arguments, claim, mm -hmm. evidence, and warrants. So yeah, so the three activity that we have learned, uh, I mean, you know, re reflective practice is just to remind them that argument is not a strange one. It is not that difficult, right? So my second activity, uh, forensic scenario, which is like crime scene, uh, and, and then brain teaser, they can be used for our Jan Lena students. Yes. 
Yes, I'll yes, thank teacher. You for your answer. Thank you, teacher. Like, uh, I want to say it. I've never te teach my student like that one. So I try to join this webinar, and that's really affected teacher. And then the first one and the second one that you trying to use the thing is really interesting, and that's really affected for the young learner teacher. And then they will they can be more argued than us because we began the uh, adult planner. So uh, we try to say, oh, this is possible, but for their level, teacher, that's really good. And I would like to know uh, how can I find those resources to uh, buy or how can I get those things for the young learner? I'm really interested for my students. So how can I find it? Like the mommy and her mother and the second, uh, that is for the young learner is okay. And the first one also like about the madra. How can I do it, teacher? Yeah. So this kind. Th yeah. Thank you, thank you for your question. It is a very good question. Um, so you can look for forensic scenario on Google. Actually, I just you know this is just a photo from Google. Um, so I Google it uh, by typing a uh, forensic scenario. There are other scenario out there too. Um, you can also look for um. Actually, I love to watch a uh, detective short videos on Facebook. So they are like videos like that, right? And then they, 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 they there is a case. And then like they uh, interview and then they look for, uh, you know, the murderer or something like that. So we can also use those videos too. Um, brain teaser. Actually, it is not from the book. I just thought about it. Uh, actually, this is my idea. Um, yeah. I just type, you know, brain teaser to teach argument to my to our Jean, Jean Lena, and then you will see a lot of uh, brain teaser, but most of them are not usable for argumentative writing, right? So, yeah. Uh, this, yeah, I didn't find a lot of brain teaser to have, um. Yeah. Argumentative writing, yeah. Um, you might need to take more time to look for some brain teaser to just ask. I know. Yes, I I was educated. That's really good. Thank you for your sharing too. That's really a teacher. I will definitely use my young learners to do that. Let them argue systematically. I know you now how to give the guideline to them because when we were young, we just made the debate. We don't have any facts for that. That's really a and precious for me, teacher. Thank you, Tisha. Thank you so much. And also, MMT saw to really thank you for this webinar, too. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. I feel really blessed to hear this. Thank you, Tisha. Okay. So, I, I regard yeah. it as there is no question. So, before I close the webinar, may I formally invite our uh, teacher, May, so our co chair of MMT saw, to add a few words of thanks to uh, today's <laughs> webinar. Tisha, May. Jamie, yeah. you are on mute. Yes, okay. Yeah, thank you, Sia. Yeah. In fact, there is uh, some kind of question. In fact, it is not a question. It is a request from Muhammad Mumia, and he is asking, Mom, can you help in argumentative writing? So it means, okay, I guess he wants you to run a, a course on argumentative writing. So in this case, okay, before I say thank you, okay, I'm asking if you could run a, a, a more webinars, more sessions, or a training. Of course, but, teacher, of course, yeah. maybe yeah. in the future, yes. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. So, okay, so thank you so much, teacher Linda. Okay, and congratulations as well. And this is a great session and we learned a lot. Writing is a skill and neglected by most of us. Not neglected, okay, sometimes because we fear writing okay writing is something black and white and we don't want to make mistakes. And when we speak, at least we can do the self correction but in writing okay we don't want to uh, we don't want other people to see that we have made a mistake so we we dare not try our skills so many teachers 
I myself, okay, including me, I don't want to teach writing. I can teach writing, but in terms of correction and giving feedback, I'm quite reluctant. But today, your tips and your techniques are really very relevant and usable and useful for all of us. And not only for the Myanmar teachers, Myanmar students, but also for teachers in the region. Here, we have got many teachers from around the world. I'm very happy to see that. And thank you all very much joining us. So, okay, so this is really useful. And this argument writing or argumentative writing is useful for all levels. Okay, as uh, we have discussed, not only for adult learners, university students, for the researchers, but also for young learners to start to think. Because for us as teachers, we need to teach the content as well as we need to teach the skill. And the content is, of course, okay, the grammar, the vocabulary, but the skill, the thinking skill, critical thinking skill and creativity and this kind of teaching will help our students to get those skills in real life okay so i'm really grateful to teacher linda and to everyone okay the Myanmar Tissot team and all the people present here to join us and to okay to join hand with us to make this possible so okay so my heartfelt thanks to everyone, especially to teacher Linda, for, for your time and effort and your enthusiasm uh, uh, giving this webinar to us. Thank you, teacher. I, I also would like to thank to you, teacher May, for inviting me. And then I would like to thank uh, MMP Saw and for all those, uh, for all the attendees for your uh, precious time. You know, you, you decided, right, to spend your, your, your precious time, like about two hours, to stay with me to learn how to write argumentative writing it means a lot to me thank you so much for that thank you thank you and uh, our colleagues teachers from all around the world here okay we would like to invite you as well to be as speakers not only as presenters so if, if you are interested in presenting a webinar a workshop just shout out loud okay just tell us that you are interested in sharing a session okay and we're trying to set you in a in the calendar, we have got the calendar, we'll find some time. And we also like to um, okay, learn from you. And if you have in-person events, please invite us and we will try to come to your countries. Okay, all right. Thank um, you, thank you. Yeah. 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 Xianyin, do you have some more to say, yeah? Yes, teacher, <laughs> I would like to conclude this, okay. So as we are near to the end of this productive webinar, let me make uh, take a moment to express most of appreciation to uh, teachers and the participants. So first and foremost, like uh, teacher Linda, thank you so much for your very comprehensive uh, webinar. So these are very practical and also insightful. So I believe that we can undoubtedly evaluate our teaching practices when it comes to uh, agreement writings and we can apply uh, these practical steps in our uh, classroom. So uh, you cover all the things, including how to give feedback. So that is very practical and useful. We have so many takeaways today. So, and also uh, for our incredible participants, your active present and insightful person were truly valuable, like uh, really engaging today. So that's why uh, thank you for your lively interactions and uh, diverse perspective today and also bringing your enthusiasm and willingness to make yourself uh, like uh, better in your professional development, last but not least. So I'd like to say a big thank you to teacher May for always initiating insightful webinars for teachers of English and our dedicated Myanmar TESO members. So your efforts, your behind the scenes support are the cornerstone of Myanmar TESO success. So that's why. Uh, I deeply appreciate your contribution and thank you everyone for today, your uh, participation and uh, join us more for upcoming webinars. And thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. So if you have filled in the forms, okay, we will send out the certificates in two working weeks. Okay, yeah. we all out volunteers and we are full-time teachers so we cannot do it just overnight so just okay understand us and okay we need your help we need your understanding and we will send out the certificates they are free the webinar is free the certificates are free but we are not free we have